Meantime, England is marking St. George's Day today with the birth of a new royal baby. And Lisa Laflamme, chief anchor of CTV National News, is in the UK in Windsor today. And she has a very special guest with her now. Lisa. Yes, we're here at Windsor Castle. We were doing a little bit of advance work for the big uh, royal wedding coming up. And lo and behold, a baby is born. I am joined by Hugo Vickers, royal historian. First of all, Hugo, uh, always exciting news when there's a new baby in the family. Where does this one fit in the line? Well, this is interesting because we're really pleased it's been born on St. George's Day, which is a day of national sort of celebration, England's great day. And um, what's interesting about this baby is that uh, although he's a boy, he doesn't push Princess Charlotte out of the line of succession. So because the line of the of new rules. Because of the new rules. He's the first one to, uh, to be a part of that. So you've got, uh, after the Queen, you've got Prince Charles, Prince William, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, Prince we don't know who yet. And then Prince Harry. Wow, and it was a busy pregnancy actually for Kate. She she maintained a lot of her engagements while she was pregnant. Yes, she did. She's always had a difficult time at the beginning of her pregnancies. I mean, some women do, as you know, and it's 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 always been tricky for her. She's she suffered quite a lot, but then she's been very active until very recently. But um, perhaps significantly, she wasn't at the Queen's 92nd birthday concert on Saturday night. Right. She was resting, and uh, anyway. A couple of days later, here's the good news. And of course, it's all a month away from, less than a month really, for the for the royal wedding. Um, so the timing is actually perfect. Was the wedding timed so that she would have had that baby? Up to a point, I think the wedding was, I mean, you know, they know roughly when the, the baby was going to come. I mean, the wedding being in the summer in May is quite a good time actually to have the wedding. Um, so I don't think it was specifically timed there, but I mean, obviously we'd very much want um, the Duchess of Cambridge to be there. Does this will. does this push Harry now further back from the throne that now that a, a baby has been born? It does. He's now number six in line, and of course, as time goes on, that's the, the fate of younger members of the royal family. They go further and further down the line as they grow older. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, we're standing here in front of the beautiful Windsor Castle, which will be the backdrop for the wedding. What kind of preparation is happening right now in in anticipation of that? Well, one of the wonderful things that's um, been a a feature of recent royal weddings, particularly thinking about Prince William and Catherine's wedding, is that nobody got into the car with a Daily Mail journalist and revealed any secrets, which meant to say that the whole of the media was able to relax and we learn everything on the day. So we actually know very little about what's happening. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot of plans going on inside the castle. We do know that the wedding is going to be at, at noon in St George's Chapel. We know also there's going to be a carriage procession and that they will come out, obviously, through the Henry VIII gateway. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, see some you can soldiers see the changing past. of the guards right now. Exactly. They will go down the hill. They will go along behind us, right down to the Long Walk, and then up the Long Walk and into the castle that way. And by that time, of course, it means that their guests will have had time just to walk up the hill, mm. be, in, be in readiness to greet them with a glass of champagne in their hands. And I don't know if we can see, David, if we can just pan the camera here. You can see the tourist stuff is already out. We've got the Harry and Meghan tea towels, of course, the prerequisite tea towels. But it really is, there is a level of excitement in the country. Would you, I mean, as an outsider, I could sort of feel it already. I think so. Also, the lovely thing about Windsor is that Windsor absolutely loves it when the roads are closed and there's a traffic jam <laughs> and I mean, everything is going to be sealed off for this day. They know something exciting has happened. In London, to be honest, people are busy and they sometimes find that a bit of a nuisance. But in Windsor, they just realise this is a, a great moment of excitement. And actually, they have it pretty much every day because the, the guards march from the barracks up the hill. So in the morning, the high street is, is closed. So beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So there is excitement. And yes. the chances of the new baby being at the wedding. No. The baby won't, be at the wedding. <laughs> won't be there. Will they bring the kids, though, the other kids? or, or I suspect the other two flower will. Flower children? Have, um, or... Well, we don't know again. I mean, Prince George is probably old enough now. Yes, well, you see, they were at Pippa Middleton's wedding last summer. So, yes, I suspect they will be here. Exciting. Very yes. exciting times for the royal family. And what grandchild is this great grandchild for Her Majesty? Well, uh, let's try and work this one out. It's about six, I think. Six. Um, but Zara Phillips has got a few, hasn't she? And uh, and um, Peter Phillips has got some. So Prince Harry, obviously not yet, but yeah, mm -hmm. quite a lot. Very exciting. All right, Great Hugo friendship. Vickers, thank you so much. And you will be with us for our royal wedding coverage on May 19th. So great to speak to you today and uh, as we said a lot of excitement now that uh, a new baby boy is born to uh, Prince William and Kate so uh, no name yet we'll wait for that
and we'll throw it back to you in the studio. All right. Lisa Laflamme in Windsor. Thanks for that, Lisa.